Good morning and welcome everyone on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Jason Launders and I'm standing in for the pastor today who's taking some time off. Uh, the altar fa- flowers are given to the glory of God in memory of the birthday anniversary of Floyd Small, given by his son Daniel Small. And so let's start with the confession uh, and asking for God's forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, God gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Thank you, Janet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from James, chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For any are hearers of the word and not doers. They are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance, being not hearers who forgot not, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If anything, if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Gospel reading is from St. Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, 14 to 15, and 21 to 23. Mark's gospel depicts Jesus as challenging traditional ways in which religious people determine what is pure and or impure. For Jesus, the observance of religious practices cannot become a substitute for godly words or deeds that spring from a faithful heart. Now, when the Pharisees and some, of the Phar- and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honors me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that that by going in can defile him, but the things that come out or what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person.
Good morning, Jen and Henry. Good morning. Today we have a quick contest for you. We have a banana in front of each of you. And the first one in the contest, what I need you to do is cut the banana, peel it, whatever you want to do, cut into as many pieces as you want, and you have 10 seconds to do so. All right, are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, on your marks, get set, go. Hurry up, Henry, hurry up, hurry up. Quick, 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 quick. Start cutting, start cutting, start cutting, start cutting. Quick, quick, start cutting. Oh. All okay, right, time's up. time's up, good job. All right, guys, for the next part of the uh, contest, my lovely assistant, Mr. Foreman, has some supplies for you. We have some rubber bands, some glue, some tape, and we have some toothpicks, some paper clips, and some band-aids. Uh, what I'd like you to do is take those supplies and put the banana back together the way it was. I'm gonna go ahead and give you 30 seconds to do that because that's a little bit more challenging. So, on, are you guys ready? All right, on your marks, get set, go. Time's up. All right, how's it look? How'd you guys do? I think huh? yeah, well, I mean, does, let me ask you, does the banana look the same as when you started? No. Which was easier, cutting the banana up or building it back together? Cutting it up. Cutting it up. In today's Bible reading, we're reminded that we should be slow to speak and slow to anger because it's easier to tear each other down than it is to build each other up. Just like it was much easier to tear this banana apart than it was to put it back together. So this week, let's use kind words with each other and help it to build each other up. Thank you guys for your help and have a great week. May the Spirit of God fill us with peace and joy and lead us to faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm not sure whether you know this, but uh, we follow the, the lectionary as we, go th as we walk through the Bible on a three-year cycle. And what amazes me about the lectionary is that Christians throughout the world, both Roman Catholics and Protestants, we all read the same thing each Sunday. And I think that's pretty amazing. Um, so that people here, we're listening, we're reading these stories from James and Mark, and people in Australia have just read them in Europe and Africa and all throughout the world. So I think that's, that's pretty amazing. Today, I've entitled my, my, my message as Religion for God. And uh, we, we come to the letter of James, which in many ways feel a little bit different from the other letters written by Paul, Peter, and John. I find it more practical. James uses a lot of little illustrations to help us understand his points. In some ways, it is like the way Jesus taught, and that's not surprising, as James was likely Jesus' own brother, and later, the leader of the church in Jerusalem. In our Bibles, the epistles or letters are those by, uh, after those by Paul are ordered simply from the longest to the shortest. So it's difficult to see any logical order. In fact, this letter is also likely to be one of the oldest books in the New Testament, possibly predating the writing of the Gospels. So it addresses the real issues of the earliest, that the earliest Christians faced, and I don't think they have changed that much. One issue that I've heard many people have asked us is, if I am forgiven, for both my past and future sin, 
then why don't I just live a life of sin? And James answers this in this letter by saying, a genuine faith is marked by a consistent lifestyle and a deep desire to know God better. In other words, if we have genuine faith, then we won't want to live our old life of sin and that of inward looking. So let's look at what James is telling us today. Firstly, have you ever said something too quickly and regretted it? James points out today that we have two ears and one mouth. If we speak too quickly, then anger and resentment follows. Inevitably, a barrier is built between two people. This is the exact opposite of righteousness. But there's more. We need to get rid of the moral filth and evil that is prevalent. As Christians, we need to be different. The rest of the world may think it's okay to be offensive, but when we, but when we are, we are not just offending others, we offend God. Often we find ourselves being offended and it's easy to react. Sometimes the basic human instinct kicks in, fight or flight. For those who are interested in science, the part of our brain that reacts is called the amygdala. When it reacts, the rest of our brain, the rational part, becomes disabled and we don't think straight. And James has a solution for this. Be quick to listen and by humbling accepting the word. In other words, have God's word deeply held in our hearts and that will guide you. And James says it will save you. Secondly today, have you ever listened to a sermon and come away with a resolve to change something in your life? But then you don't. That's what James is talking about with the mirrors. Of course, in the first century, mirrors were not as prevalent as they now are. The Romans had glass and polished metal, but the resulting mirrors were no match to those we see everywhere today. Also, the only pictures you would see of yourself if you were living in the Roman world were paintings, not the prevalent selfies we have so much today. So, people would not have seen themselves that often. And when they did, it would have been a fuzzy picture or an artist's impression. Basically, looking at yourself was a big deal and it took effort, as does listening to a preacher. We're fortunate today in that we have a wealth of opportunities to listen to God's word being taught. So we have no excuse not to listen. And more importantly, doing what it says. James points out that it is worth the effort. The result, if we do, is perfect freedom. Next time you look in a mirror, which is probably the next time you visit the bathroom, remind yourself about something you know you need to change in your life and act. And thirdly today, and the one I want to spend the most time on, is religion. Have you ever been to a religious ceremony and wondered who is really benefiting from it? Religion is something that makes us human. Take a look at all the ancient ruins and signs of human activity from long ago. They are most likely to be old fortifications or some type of temple or shrine, most likely to be religious. You will find such things all over the world. 6,000-year-old cave paintings in Africa showing cattle in ceremonial robes. The jungles of Asia are full of temples. The temples throughout the Mediterranean and the Middle East. Mayan, Incan, and Aztec ruins in Central and South America. In North America, where the indigenous nations are not renowned for leaving stone buildings behind for archaeologists to dig up, we find many examples of cave art and rock patterns like the medicine wheels. 
Europe is full of stone circles. From, most, from the most northern parts to the, of the Atlantic to the Mediterranean, stones carefully positioned for religious ceremonies. I could go on and on, but it's clear that religious belief has been a fundamental part of human culture since humans came into existence. But why is this? To answer this, I want to look at two ancient stone monuments that I visited. The first is Machu Picchu, the remote Inca citadel high up above the tributaries of the Amazon, the Urubamba River in Peru. It was only discovered in 1911. Today, you can only get there by either hiking or taking the train. There's no road. What is not obvious from the views you often see is that the citadel is on a very high and narrow, steep-sided ridge. It's about 1,500 feet above the river below. And the mountain you see behind it is another 800 feet above that. And it's, the base is at about 8,000 feet, so it is, it is a very high, remote place. Among the ruins are temples to the sun and moon. And if you look at a tourist map, you will see something marked as an observatory. If you visit, you will see a very unusual shaped rock. Imagine the effort to carve it out. So what was it for? The priests used it to determine the time to plant crops and harvest by looking at the shadows cast on the rock. In effect, the priest and the observatory stone was the bridge between the people and their god, in this case, the sun. The second monument is one that I clambered on as a toddler on Sunday afternoon walks. I had absolutely no idea that I was playing on one of the most recognized ancient monuments in the world, the 5,000-year-old Stonehenge. Our ancestors went to enormous lengths to haul those stones, some over 100 miles, to make this temple. Stonehenge is the most obvious part of a huge area filled with earthworks and signs of Stone Age Britain. The ceramic artifacts indicate that people from all over Europe traveled there. It was an important place that remains a place of pilgrimage to this day. Aligning with the sun on the longest day and the shortest day, Stonehenge was a place to commune with the gods and seek their goodwill. So, thousands of miles apart, Machu Picchu and Stonehenge were used to connect with the sun. It's clear that throughout history, man has sought to gain favor and communicate with their gods. The idea of separating religion from everyday life would be totally unthinkable for most of our ancestors. If you wanted a good harvest, then make sure you acted out the right ritual. Religion was life, and life was religion. Then comes along James. And James turns the whole idea of religion on its head. Think about ceremonies, a common feature of all religions. These ceremonies are important in that they help us bind a community together, just like those traditions every family has. But they can also make visitors feel uncomfortable and unwelcome. James is saying that the ritual ceremonies of religion are not important. Rather, it is where your heart is. The sacrifice has been made. God has promised to give us all that we need. The world's idea of religion is all wrong. It is far more pleasing to God to serve the poor. So, the ever practical James has given us three things to remember today. Firstly, we need to humbly accept God's word. We need to study it so that we can change how we can react to people and situations. Secondly, we need to remember what we hear from God. Next time you look at yourself in a mirror, think of James. And thirdly, God wants us to serve him. We are already saved, and he has promised to meet our needs, 
So he wants us to think of the needs of others and not pray like the pagans. Thank you very much. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith, sharing together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and born, born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended into hell. On, on the third, third day, he rose again. again. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the, Holy the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Thank you for your continued support of our ministry here at St. Paul's. Your offerings are greatly appreciated and enable us to reach out in witness and service to our community. And I'd like to say a special thanks too to Laura who puts on the, the weekly online service and our musical team, Janet, for singing today and Margie. And uh, if you're watching online, you'd have seen bananas being chopped up. I hope that was fun too. 
But now let's take a moment to ask God's blessing upon our offerings. God of love, you called us beloved children and filled us with your grace. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church that is a safe haven for all who seek pre your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, teachers, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of creation that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are un unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Provide food, clothes, and stability for daily life. Give safe and peaceful homes to all who live as refugees. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your children in need of healing, especially all on our prayer list. Restore the well-being of all fighting illness or injuries. Give recovery to all mending from surgery. Lift up the spirits of your ch children dealing with mental illness and help us all to work together to overcome the COVID pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Bless all who minister in our child care center. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful of the departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart, inspire us by their example, and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I hope this time of worship has nurtured your faith, stirred your spirits, and strengthened you to go forth and share the good news. Thank you for the honor of your presence here today couple of, of notices, or one very important one. Um, the Upper, per Upper, per Upper Perkiomen Child Care Center is in um, need of new teachers. As you well, are probably well aware, there is a, a lack of teachers throughout child care centers across the country, and uh, ours is no different. And we, if you know of anybody who may be interested to work with children, especially between 3 and 6 p.m. every day. Uh, we do need some more staff uh, to keep that running safely for the children and families that we serve here, which is our number one ministry that we have here at St. Paul's. So please spread the word. And if, you're, if you know of anyone interested, just have them call up the church office, and I'm sure someone will answer the phone. And with that... May God, our Creator, fill you with love, grace you with peace in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and bless you with the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.